Good quality historical price data is the foundation of good quality backtesting. In this video, I will show you how you can clean your data using Visual Basic with some simple macros. This video is the second in a two part series that shows you how you can check for errors and clean your historical data. In the first video, I looked at using formulas to check for errors and there is a link below this video or on the screen where you can check that video out. On the screen at the moment is some historical price data that I got from Yahoo Finance. Now this is the QQQ ETF and as I described in the last video, I want to check to see whether the high price is lower than either the open or the close, so we've got a problem there, or the low price is higher than either the open or the close. In the previous video, I showed you can do this using formulas, but if you've got a lot of data, it is often quicker to use code. So in Excel, we can use Visual Basic to do this, and I'll show you the code that I have used. I'm going to the module here, and we've got a sub here. If you're not a programmer, don't worry. I will show you where you can download. There is a link below this video where you can download this spreadsheet for free. Okay, so I'm going to start here at the beginning. We've got three variables. We've got i, j, and k, which stand for the number of rows, high price errors, and low price errors. And these are just simple counts. We've got a debug print here and I'll show you what that does earlier when I demonstrate it. And we're telling it to do until we've got no more data. We don't want it to go on forever. We want it to stop when there's no more price data. So the first one of these is checking to see whether either our high price is greater than the open or the close. And if it is, we add one to our high price errors and we print a message. The next part of this checks the next thing, whether the low price is correct. And if it does, it's going to tell us and print a message. And that is all it is. We count through each row in turn so we know which row we're up to. And then we have a message box that gives us an instant visual guide to see whether we've got any problems. So if I just close out of that. I've set this up to run on a button and I'm just going to click that and you can see very very quickly number of high price bad ticks is one number of low price bad ticks is zero okay so we know there is a potential problem with this data now if I go back into my code we've got here the, Im in the immediate window and we've got a note here that was printed out check the high price on the date 1907-2019. Okay, so we've got a very nice little message that's telling us to scroll all the way down here. And we can see that it happens in exactly the same place where if you watched the previous video, the formula found it to be. Except this way, we are able to find it more quickly. And you can see here that the high price here 9383 is actually in fact lower than the open price which shouldn't be the case so we found a error and now that we are aware of it we can deal with it okay for my final example i'm going to show you a, new, a situation where it is much better to have code in the previous examples you could have used formulas or code in this case it's much easier and neater to use code so again, I've got a sample of data coming from Yahoo Finance, but it could have come from any source. And you can see we've got immediately got a problem. We have these null values in here. So what do we do about them? Well, a lot of people would go through very manually and laboriously and they would do this. And if you're one of those people, well, this is going to be a bit easier for you. So let's get rid of all that. Okay, so again, I've set up a macro, a VBA macro that runs using this button here. And if we go into here, we can have a look at it. Okay, so this is the 
macro that I am using. Again, I'm going to offer this as a free download and there is a link below this spreadsheet to show you how you can get that spreadsheet. Just sign up at tradeinform.com. Okay, so we've got two things exactly the same as the last one. I and J, I and J counts our original rows, or rather I does, J counts our new rows. Why do we want original and new rows? Well, quite simply, because we're going to have to rebuild our spreadsheet. We're going to have this set of rows here, which is the original ones, but we don't want the null datas. So we go back to our code, our original and our new rows. We're starting off on row number one. And once again, we do until we have no further data left. So this is doing the checking. If we find a value of null, we don't want null. So we're going to not, we're going to ignore that. We're basically rather, let's start again. We're doing it until we don't have a value of null. So anything else is okay in this case. So if we don't have that, then we're going to copy it to our new row of data. We're going to add one to our original rows and one to our new rows. But if that is not the case, and if we do have null, then we're going to do nothing. And we're just going to add one to our original rows. If you haven't followed that, it really is very simple. And I'm going to show you in practice exactly what it looks like. So I've just set this up on a button. All this is doing is triggering the macro that we've just looked at. And I click it and practically instantly, we haven't got a lot of data, about 6,000 rows. It's just brought up the data. And you can see very quickly that this null data has been missed out. So we have our original rows and our new rows. And we've been cleaned using the macro that I have just demonstrated. I hope you found this video useful. If you want more information about backtesting the financial market, about improving your trading strategies, do click on the link below. Do sign up and get the free version of the spreadsheets that I've featured on here. And for more information, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and please go to www.tradeinform.com.